Spring game weekend, y'all. And on the recruiting tip, there's a lot of players supposed to be pulling up. Coach Brent Venables had a message for y'all. Check it out. Morning, Sooner Nation. Hey, Coach Venables here. I just want to announce a quick time change for tomorrow's spring game. It'll be at 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. 2024 spring game and the debut of Team 130. Can't wait to see everybody in the Palace, man. Let's create an amazing environment, support our players. We're going to have about 100 recruits uh, from across the country and towns, so and we get a chance to send a message uh, and also send a message to the rest of college football, uh, the passion, the love, and the support that we have, second to none, best fans in all of college football. We'll see you tomorrow, Boomer Sooner. So the game moved to 2.30 on Saturday. I'm still going to be there. Probably be wearing this hoodie just to keep myself warm because it's going to be chilly and wet. But the big thing that jumped out of that is Coach Brent Venable said it's going to be over 100 recruits in town. Guys, over 100. Of course, I got a list. But the ones I'm going to talk about, 2025, there's about five dudes that really jumped out to me that I want y'all to know about. So let's dive into it. Before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up to the channel. All right. Spring game. Recruit visits, man, over a hundred kids are going to be in town, right? As you heard Brendan Venable say, I think the other thing that jumped out to me is when I looked at the list that me and my guy PG, mainly PG put together, I'm just a guy benefiting from his work. Shout out to him. Colin Kennedy put one out also from 247 as soon as illustrated. Parker Thune over there at uh, OU Insider also dropped the list. And if I'm correct, Scoop, Sooner Scoops over at On3 also has a list. So everybody's got a list. They're cross-referencing each other, you know, check, looking at that list, checking it twice. But man, for the most part, here's your consensus guys that jump out to me that we need to talk about that's going to be in town. Let's lead off to the local guys from our list. First, we've got CJ Nixon, the big top one, 200 player in uh, college football on 247. He's ranked top 50, right? Like he's a beast. Edge 6'5", about two and some change, probably close to the 220 now. He's a big boy. And out of Weatherford, Oklahoma. So he's an athlete. He's going to probably play edge. Big. He's strong. He's a hooper. I'm hearing a whole bunch of basketball programs want him. We've talked about him on the channel. He's a must get for Oklahoma, not only because he's in state, but the dude is a top tier player. And so I'm hoping that, you know, when Nixon gets here, he checks things out and be like, yeah, you know, I want to be a part of this. He sees the violence that we have built here at the program. And he's like, yeah, let me do that. Because if that's one thing I've noticed about Oklahoma, it's been heavy on the violent players. And I love seeing that. And so CJ's one that I'm hyped about. Hope you guys are hyped too. But he's going to be a big one to come through. Staying in state, we're going to go with one that, man, it, this recruitment is going to be wild because – as a top 150 player in the country, he is heavily looked at by some big programs, and that's Tristan Haynes. He's out of Carl Albert, one of the many Carl Albert kids that we're trying to keep here. Struggle with him, though, I'm going to be honest. He really kind of want to lead the state, right? I know some of his family, and we had some conversations, and they're like, yeah, the conversations around the family household is that Tristan is really looking at the idea of leaving the state. Just because he's been here his whole life, he's ready to do something different. Can't be mad at him. Totally understand that. Oklahoma's definitely pushing hard to keep him around, right? We just recently saw Notre Dame crystal ball come in for him to go there. I know George is lurking around. So a lot of the big programs have been after him. He, his offer list is absurd, right? I mean, you're going from Notre Dame, a and Miami, Alabama, Georgia, you know, so all your big boys, LSU, Oregon, Tennessee, ain't skimping. Right, he's got a lot of your top teams wanting to pull him in because dude can. Buy. He's a really good corner, right? He's potentially a shutdown. Any six two, and he's got some speed, some wheels to him. Watching him at wide receiver, man, yeah, he's one that you, that you, that you want. You you would desperately want. I don't think he's a must get, but I desperately would like to have him in this class. All right, so moving on from him, we're gonna go some of the out of state guys. There's three out of state guys that really jumped out to me that I'm like, all right. One of them I felt like is a must-get. I still feel like he is. Defensive end, Max Granville. He'll be in. He's a top, you know, what's that, 100, about 200 player in the country. ESPN has him top 110, right? He's a beast down there in uh, Sugar Land, Texas. So, you know, get another Houston kid. He's going to be really good. Now, right now, Oklahoma seems to be doing well. Miguel Chavis is doing his job and really can, you know, talking him up, you know, sweetening him up, getting him here. 
he'll be here for the game and he's one of those kids. I'm just like, yeah, I would like him to be a part of this class. He's He feels like a must get just because of the way he plays. He is another violent player that likes to hit. And so if Oklahoma can lay hands on him, again, there's a narrative that I'm seeing that's going about the way that Oklahoma is getting players. They're getting dudes that like to hit hard, right? Not just football players, just violent hitters. I love it. I don't want peace. I want problems, always. And that's what I'm getting out of this one. So from Granville, you got uh, Amarion Robinson out of Arkansas, the other Arkansas player that we were looking at. You know, we got Marcus Wimberly, another violent hitter that has been flying up the charts, by the way. Definitely going to do a video on on three's latest updates and how we've seen some dudes fly up the charts. We'll talk about that in a minute. Two main guys. Wimberly's one of them. Kind of a teaser. But... Marion Robinson is another one, four star. He's a top 300 player, basically, for the most part. On three and 247, I don't have him rated yet, but ESPN and Rivals have him easily in the top 200. He can play. Nice kid out of Little Rock, Arkansas. He's one that I know Oklahoma has been tied to for a bit. He can play. So, adding to that safety room that y'all know is very packed, we've got a lot of really good players. Really good ones. And so, I'm sensing that you bring in him. You know, add him to the class with Wimberly. Maybe take one more. I like, to, you know, being able to take those players from Arkansas. But yeah, he's good. I think uh, uh, I think Marion is, is one of the better ones out there. Like I said, him and Wimberly. Yeah, that, that's going to be, um, it'll be fun to watch. Just put it that way. And the last one is a surprise one that just popped up um, on the social medias I've seen floating around. is uh, Cortez Mills, wide receiver out of Homestead, Florida. Sounds like Emmett Jones is doing what he does best, right? He is a, of course, 2025 player, six foot, about 165. Watch some of his tape. Four star, top 110 player in the country, about, you know, averaging out on the consensus composite side, about, you know, about 100 ish. He's good. Like, he's good. He's a blazer. He can catch. He can catch um, in contestion. Yeah, I, I would I would like him on our roster if Emmy Jones could steal it. Now I don't sense it. Now you know in high school he had what seventy nine catches, about sixteen hundred yards, and eighteen touchdowns down in the Miami. Uh, he's a all part of the All Day team down in Miami. He can play. Now Emmy may be able to steal this kid away in the uh, seven on seven tourneys. He was putting up some stuff, got some film to look at. We'll talk about it another time. If we start to see things materialize, I don't want to get too excited and putting the cart before the horse, but I'm telling you this, man, this dude's a top 100 talent. He really is. And if we can get down there and snatch him away, I mean, you know, I, your boy ain't going to be arguing, right? He, he ain't going to fight it. But over 100 kids, these are the ones I highlighted because I even looked at the list that, you know, PG has put together. 26 has got probably the most kids coming, right? You've probably got about 15 to 20 of them out of just 26. So we're starting to recruit the sophomores, a.k.a. going that are becoming juniors that we're looking at. So a lot of 26s on there. You know, a few 27s are pulling up and, some, and a 28. I saw a 28, a couple of them. And, of course, the portal guys. But the bigger thing is, is... That's the five dudes, and I'm just like, all right, Oklahoma, put in work. Hop in the comments, let your boy know your thoughts. How y'all feeling about that list? What y'all think? You made it this far, like the content. Please hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Subscribe. Love to hear from y'all. You know, Sooner fans, talking all you football here, college football in general, having a blast doing it. So um, this will be on the Sooner or Later channel because it's all recruits coming to spring ball. So, hey, y'all pull up. I'll be around. Peace.